This is In Boot Camp, Episode 5, Brand Statement, on Saturday, February 16th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersand. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB5. Hey there, big week? Huge week. Yep, it's that time of the week again. It's Episode 5 of In Boot Camp. Wow, it's been a long time. Yeah, a whole week. Hmm, well, that's very regularly paced. It's almost like we're following a plan and structure. That is unusual. Yeah. But no, um, things are going on, continuing with the JavaScript, like um, we said what we were last week. Um, well, we did a few more things with Bootstrap and stuff, but nothing new, nothing groundbreaking, like just, yeah, like you can read in like so if you had like a button you could attach a value to it and other things and you could read that in with jquery really nicely and really quickly so i think um, what's interesting is when i think of javascript i don't necessarily think of doing anything with the dom immediately you know i think about like here's a function here's data manipulate that data and so you've already bridged that gap right into doing dom stuff but that's how we started mm-hmm. um i mean the first pretty much one of the first things we did with javascript was that document dot write inner html blah 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 and then we started doing stuff like target element by id and um, and then jquery just append child or append whatever and so it's uh i don't know we haven't really done anything about actual like you know software stuff yet well you'd be surprised what what accounts for software these days so but like you know how um in back in high school when we had our like we had to multiply matrices we had to do little problem solving things. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of those things are contrived examples that don't really actually manifest in real life anyway, so it's okay. Yeah. And um we had a cool little fun project that I enjoyed today. We had to make a stopwatch and okay. um well, you know how seconds work. After 60 of them, you get a minute and everything else. And then if you're counting by seconds, um, you have to handle that. You have to handle all the other things. Um, so how do, you, how do you make a stopwatch? Like, what, what's your process for doing that? Well, um, so a lot of the stuff, they because these are supposed to be done in class and not they're not designed to be full-fledged projects, they gave us like a style sheet and they gave us an HTML file. And in that, like, they already had all the buttons, they had all the structure there, and then they told us what all the IDs were. Um, and then, so, the this project, we were supposed to use all the stuff from today's slideshow, which was pretty much just a little 20-minute thing about uh, setting intervals. And, um, yeah. And it was pretty fun. Um, made a little counter... Set, er- set interval is pretty fun, I agree. Did you set timeout at all? Yeah, well, actually, I think we started with setting timeouts and stuff. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I set you something that broke. Um, like, in the, one of the demos, they had a thing where, like, find the bug, and we couldn't figure out what it was. And then some, he said, you guys, hit the um, resume button a few times. And then yep. it just automatically started, you know, counting even faster. Yeah, and so the Which reason you have for to that clear interval, right? And so the reason for that was the 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 code sample had um, set interval in in that function that was basically the event handler for that button uh, on click, and every time you clicked, it would do another one, and so you have to clear the previous ones to get rid of those you know versions. Yeah, yep, that's a very common bug in. Any any kind of uh, set timeout or set interval code happens all the time. So when you do your little unit test, like you show me your just whatever thing, do, like does it test everything like that, or do you so have to test te- that kind of stuff by hand? Testing intervals is a little trickier because it's sort of an async programming kind of thing. I think when you when you um, when you write code, you try to get away from anything that isn't testable, and that would be one of the things that is not testable. Because it worked if you hit stop and then resume, right. uh, the counter worked as intended. It was just if you're being, you know, I'm just going to click resume for the fun of it, did it start acting misbehaving? Right. So I think it, it's, um, you know, testing is a really com- complicated topic and we don't have to do it today. But I think one of the interesting things about JavaScript in particular is that end-to-end testing is so, there's so much capability for end-to-end testing. And the idea of, of that approach is, 
what if we could simulate a, a, a virtual browser or a headless browser or a real browser to go and do the actions and see the data we would expect as a result of those actions and then record the screen for that duration and see if it looks like it should look. Yeah. And and so you can imagine that's a lot of work to code and it takes a long time to run, but it's possible. Scary, but possible. But, um, and guess what next week is uh, a I don't lot know. more JavaScript. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm glad so. you're still going. So, um, uh, I see here you've mentioned bootstrap again. Tell me about bootstrap again. Oh, um, so we've used bootstrap buttons and stuff like the alert and all the other things, like, you know, how they have different colors and stuff. We made a calculator earlier this week. Um, and it was just like, you can give things IDs and other things and you can, or you can, um, in the attribute, you can say like this button is string eight and then you can read it in and just set it real easy with jQuery. Mm -hmm. Um, and it threw me for the loop some of that jQuery syntax stuff. It's um <laughs> kind of weird, right? Yeah, when you glance at it, you, you can't think that a few things can actually do all that, but it is. It does. Um, it is shorthand. It definitely is shorthand. Than... It, it is the shortest hand. Yeah. So uh, I will give you uh, my perspective on the jQuery syntax. So MooTools uh, was the team I was on, basically, when I started learning any of this stuff. And jQuery always looked really weird because you could do, like, how do you add an event in jQuery? To, to a button, for example. Oh, like, uh, just, like, on click and then pass it, like, a click and then function or whatever you want it to do. Yep, exactly. So, and and the keyword there was on. Like, the event handler function is called on. So, that sounds cool, but on has no context. It doesn't mean anything. In MooTools, the equivalent would be add event. Uh So, the the MooTools API, best written, most coherent, simple, obvious, and intuitive APIs that anybody could make for DOM manipulation and, you know, associated, you know, things, utilities jQuery is uh, not only a, a DOM shorthand, but it's also even a lot of the other stuff. Like when you start looking at plugins and you start looking at, you know, um, some of its other utilities for Ajax and stuff, it just does really bizarre stuff sometimes. And there's no getting away from it. The, the names don't help you figure out what anything means. Um, there's just a lot of, you know, knowledge that you just have to remember. So what are the weird things is so every other saturday we have a different professor and i got the other class professor today and everyone uses different words to describe stuff and i've noticed that what did he describe um, it today well like so um he kept on saying anonymous function and stuff oh, uh, sure. my professor keeps on calling them callback functions yeah sure they're both right um, yeah they're both right and stuff but um we have a group of like 60 people and like Thursday was just talking to your classmates, making sure everyone was on page. Like it was like a catch up day. So and like a review day, yeah. I spent like two hours with this person and they didn't get any closer to understanding arrays and array methods. Yeah. Um The march of progress does not slow down for students that aren't around. <sighs> So that was Thursday that this happened, and so Saturday before class, I got there a little early, and um, I went up and talked to her, and like, hey, did it start making any kind of sense? And she's just like, no, I didn't even look at it. I'm, I'm just, I just come here and hope I learn everything in class. Um, she's unemployed right now. Uh, this is her one thing right now, and she has no resolve, no dedication, no will to do it. Yeah, and so having having that, um, you know, resolve as you say uh to to actually go learn or at least try to learn in your own time especially when you don't have other blocking things in your personal free time like work yeah uh dogs um other people you know that kind of stuff um like when you do have that kind of copious free time like having the resolve to go and learn stuff is really important and nobody can help you with that that's not really no because the TAs kind of go over and try to help, but... And it's not as if um, your class 
is the only resource for this knowledge in the world. I mean, there are, as you know, and showed me oh, yeah. thousands of free videos on YouTube and thousands of very cheap videos on other platforms to watch and, and I learn from. I really like that Udemy. Uh, they have so many different instructors, so many different other things. Um, yep. And to be honest, that's, I like videos. I like being able to start and pausing and stuff because, um, I don't know. I've, I know you say like, oh, uh, instructional videos are only good for the beginnings and the stuff. And oh, you will get there. You'll be right alongside me in no time at all. Yeah. Yeah. But I know I am really enjoying this class still. Um, and it's just, you know, the instructor said that we're not going to learn anything new. We're just going to keep on building on what we already know. And yeah. And, and that's one of those interesting things like, um, web development is, uh, chronically built on what you know. There, there is no escape from what was older. You, 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 you are, you asked me last week, like, so is jQuery still relevant? And I'm like, well, no, but yes. Yeah. So it's it's that kind of thing. So not understanding something, even if you don't understand it well, but having no knowledge of something or awareness, it does lead to a big gap. Yeah. And that's why we had this catch-up day, mm -hmm. because it's just going to snowball if you don't. Right, for sure. And it's literally about half and half. Mm -hmm. um, like understanding to not totally understanding? Yeah. When we started doing, uh, like... Uh, calling objects so it, we had an array in one of our exercises and in that array was a bunch of objects and then that object had it, uh, an array in it and then we or is this is like a oh, it was a calling thing like okay you gotta yeah. do like it was just an exercise about all it was was just console log this console log that and then like you had to get a sentence to read out um mm -hmm. and it was just like um uh, this is the bigger web and this is the smaller web it was just it was a stupid little sentence but you just is supposed to get you to understand how to call like you know object dot id like just yeah yeah but a lot of people just gave up you know i really take for granted a lot of the understanding that i have from a lot of this kind of stuff because i didn't learn java first you kind of learned java first um oh because uh, php is your person or home it's it's my home, language it's my home, home native language right and so you learn you would say you learn java first right Oh yeah. Yeah. So I I never had a problem with thinking about like here's an associative array, here's a key and a value, and you can get to the value by using its key, no big deal. The value can be anything. It could be another associative array, it could be another array, it could be just a number, it could be just a string, no problem. And then in JavaScript that all is exactly mirrored. And then in Java, none of that makes any sense anymore, but you can still get around it with an array list, and then you can have specialty array lists and so on. So I, I I feel like I take for granted uh, a lot of that understanding. Are you happy with how you learned? Oh yeah, it's great. So very organic. Um, a lot of what I've learned before going to work was directly applicable in what I actually do at work. Um, so JavaScript, you would say, is like one of the top languages to have be your first in the future. There will never be a language that's worse or better or equal to javascript i mean it, at every point in history there was always a language to learn and today in this year it might be javascript that's fine 10 years ago no wait no mm, 15 years ago it was probably probably would have been java so like 2005 that would have been a java time 95 it probably would have been a c or c plus plus time 90 it would have been c like there's always a language to learn in the time you're in to get the most capability out of what you learn Okay. Um and and so what I did in terms of learning though is very organic like here's here's a project or a thing that I want. So what do I need to know to build it? Then I go figure it out. Yeah. Um and then and then the other thing though is when you start to show other people your code even if they don't know how to code or don't care, you'll look at your code again and you'll say that is the worst code I've ever seen. Get it away from me and set it on fire. That's is, wow. Have you, have you ever heard me say those things? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and how many weeks apart was that? Uh, sometimes a week. Sometimes like ten years. 
Yeah. We went over to the to, uh, right before this. We found I found a zip from my high school sophomore year, um, and it was just funny because you would write comments to yourself, and they are you're making the same jokes as you are today. Yeah, I'm still still doing it. It's almost like uh, the brand's on point. Exactly. Uh, speaking of branding, um, so, I've heard that you're starting to work on branding. Yes. Um, so running together with our academic activities, we also have our career resources activities. Um, so tell me more about that. Well, basically not much is happening now, but after the mid midway through the course, so in another two months when we're halfway, we're going to start doing a whole lot more with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they just wanted you to start thinking about uh, just a 75 to 150 word, like, you know, brand statement paragraph. That's and a lot of, a lot of wording. Well, it's just, they wanted you to just think of that. And they gave you a few examples and, um, I had to just come up with a few other things too. Um, did, did you come up with anything that you're willing to share? Yes. And I'm guessing you're going to want me to read it. And I, just, if you don't want to read it, I can read it. Wait, do you already have it? No. Oh, good. No, I'm going to read it. I mean, I okay. just... Also, it's, um, do you know, sometimes, um, nobody knows what you're going to say is a lie because it's something you wrote and you can sell anything. Yeah. I'm very, very acutely aware of that obtuse fact. So, yeah. I am a front end web developer with experience with updating and adding new content to old projects and creating new ones. I have a strong interest and passion for technology. I work well in teams and by myself. When I don't know something or fall short, I very quickly learn from it and become a better developer. Each day I strive to know more than the day before. That's great. I love it. It's a start. Yeah, I I don't know, but it's just, I, I tweaked a few of I saw and made it kind of work to something I know. So I, 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 I think, um, when you say that you hate working in teams, you hate working in teams that will basically but, make you do all the work. Well, it's just I, I try to engage with my team members. Like and we, they don't we were in a group of five, with you. and I'm like, okay, hey, what do we want to do this? What do we, we want to do that? Want to do that? And it's just watching somebody unzip the file that is just like because we get a lot of templates and stuff like it's just okay now we're writing the javascript thing uh now, now we're just doing that these people don't know how to use computers it's just it's yeah. frustrating it is frustrating and so i understand what you mean when you say you don't like working in teams i also did not like working in teams when i was in college um because i often was basically the one to make the whole project and do the whole project and was the whole project um and some of that's my personality because like it's easier for me just to do it because I know how and just like don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, I love working in teams because there's so much I don't know, and there's so much, th- so many things that people do know, and they can teach me stuff and I can teach them stuff, and it's it's a good good fun time. Well, that's good. So your your brand statement, where do you what do you do with that? Like when they have you write that, what do you do with it? Uh, my assignment was by Wednesday at midnight to have that in a Google Doc and send them a link that they can view it if they have the link and that we'd be adding it to my LinkedIn profile and my resume in coming weeks. Cool. Yeah, you should do that sometime. Uh, I think that's a, a really interesting thing. I would be interested if your class has you share that statement with, you know, some of your peers and like... You know, hear oh, what's similar. It. Here's here's hear what's similar. Here's what's different. Um, and I and I wish that the the coursework that I had done kind of uh, did some more of that cross sharing. Uh, I'm about thirty three percent of the class has signed up to do this. Almost no in my you just, table. You've just signed nobody... up to do it. Yeah, it's optional. It's optional. Why yeah, the, is the it career optional? services is completely optional. It doesn't make any sense. Well, the guy next to me is already employed, and he doesn't want to look for another job right now. Um, the person's like, uh, I'm moving to Connecticut, and I don't think that they have jobs in Connecticut, so I'm just going to do this class and not worry about a thing. And just nobody cares. So what is the lesson that you've learned here? Uh, to leave the group behind and keep on moving forward? Yes, and that you did the right thing by taking the career services whatever optional thing yeah so it's just it's not hard it's just well just 
write a half a paragraph about something i'm a work great in teams and i have a passion and interest for technology exactly i mean it just anyone would throw up if they had to read this and knew me um but Is that's what they part of do? the brand i just I, gotta fool the managers into hiring you uh, i suppose or is that how you not you didn't think of it this way when you made your own brand statement um i mean i didn't really make a brand statement so i guess i was immune from that issue yeah yeah so and you so, still made it <laughs> well i i have a different way of having a brand statement i suppose uh you just listen to me talk and uh that's it and follow you on twitter yeah at random R. um so when do you start working on your resume um i don't know um every week we've had a little mi- micro goal and um like one of them was just Make a LinkedIn profile. Don't have to do anything. Just just make it. Like they they wanted to make this little little baby steps for the ha- first half of the course. That's good. You you need to have those. Um, yeah, it's it's good to start thinking about what you want to have on your resume and what you uh, want to format your resume as, um, because there's a lot of different formats and you know they can and matter depending on what kind of field. Because I've looked at some that would never work for you know when you have a lot of information to put down. Exactly. Uh, and and so right now you might not have a lot of information. So and, one thing that they stressed in our – so we had uh, guidelines, like an idea of making our brand statement. And one thing they kept on saying, like, if you have a degree in art, don't put it down. Only put down relevant things. Well, if you have a degree in art, you should put down that you have a degree. Like only relevant things to the field that you want. Uh, mm, that's mediocre advice in my opinion. Yeah, but we get a one-on-one counselor coming up later, and they're going to help coach us and help us do like generic. And that's also questions. optional. Yeah, but I already signed up for it. Yeah, um, and that's really weird. Well, the class now now you can't sign up for it. Um, right. If you didn't miss, if you didn't do milestone one or milestone two, it's 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 over. That's really strange. I'm, it's a, it's well, a bummer. It, I'm taking advantage of everything people. I can. Oh, I agree, and that's exactly what you should do. Cool. So, where can we find you on the internet? Well, I was thinking, where can we find you doing interesting things next week? What do you, what do you, what do you have coming up? Oh, just more, uh, more, more JavaScript stuff. Um, the, the they don't give us too much. They just they give us little weird like JavaScript juggernaut and all these other like uh, keep on chugging like train jokes. Um, oh, yeah, no train um, jokes. They they keep it they keep it pretty generic. So. Kind of sad. You can't work ahead. You can't do anything. Um, which, meh. It's okay. It is. Uh, well, uh, since you told me where, we, where what you're doing next week, I'll tell you where you can find me on the internet. And that is just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Randomar. And, of course, on my website, RyanRampersad.com. And how about you? Oh, you could find me only on the GitHub and on the Nexus.tv slash in bootcamp. You'd think you about that. you can find the show notes. To all the stuff we talked about, which isn't a whole lot for this show, but they you, are there. You had to think about that really hard. Hmm, what is that website called? What is that website called? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it for today. Yeah. Uh, until next week. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.